Hi, this is Matthew Cruz in Creighton Radiology, and welcome to the mini lecture on pyelonephritis. Let's get started. The definition of pyelonephritis is infection of the renal parenchyma, and this is typically an ascending infection. The patient initially has a cystitis or bladder infection, and the infectious process tracks up the ureters to the renal collecting system, and then actually involves the renal cortex or renal parenchyma. Pyelonephritis, uh, as you may know, is a clinical diagnosis. So if a patient has flank pain and a positive urinalysis, you can say they have pyelonephritis. And in an uncomplicated patient where the, the clinical presentation is clear, no imaging is actually required. But imaging can be helpful in complicated or refractory cases. I just want to note here that CT may also show other forms of ascending infection Ureteritis is basically inflammation or infection of the ureter, and pyelitis refers to infection of the renal pelvis, and we'll discuss some of the CT findings for these diagnoses. Pyelonephritis, as we've mentioned, does not require imaging in a straightforward clinical case. However, imaging can be helpful in some cases. This is the table from the American College of Radiology Appropriateness Criteria. In a complicated patient, for example, someone with diabetes, immunocompromised, or history of renal stones, or someone with prior renal surgery, imaging may be helpful. They also mentioned that if someone is not responding to antibiotic therapy over a certain time period, further imaging may be helpful to evaluate for complications. The initial preferred imaging test is CT of the abdomen and pelvis with IV contrast. CT findings of pyelonephritis. The most characteristic CT finding in acute pyelonephritis is hypoenhancement of renal parenchyma. Normal renal cortex or parenchyma enhances avidly after injection of IV contrast, as 20% of the cardiac output reaches the kidneys. But if that parenchyma is infected, it will not enhance normally. Typically, this is a multifocal process, and you get multiple linear areas of hypoenhancement in the kidney or in both kidneys. And this results in the so-called striated nephrogram, striated meaning stripes of hypoenhancement in the kidney. Some supportive CT findings in acute pyelonephritis include renal enlargement and asymmetric perinephric edema or fat stranding. Now, perinephric edema on its own is a very common finding that typically means nothing. But if it's only on one side and the patient has symptoms on that side, you may suggest that that's an infected kidney. A narrow CT window may be required to visualize the hypoenhancement of the cortex, as it can be a subtle finding. Several complications of pyelonephritis can also be visualized on CT. This includes renal or perirenal abscess, renal scarring, and renal vein thrombosis. CT can also visualize several stages along the course of the ascending ureteritis tract infection. Ureteritis, or infection of the ureter, and pyelitis, or infection of the renal pelvis, typically demonstrate thickening and enhancement of the urothelial lining. There is also surrounding fat stranding. We have to be a little careful in patients who have a history of prior urology procedures or urinary stones, as chronic inflammation can have a similar appearance. In the upper portion of the slide, you see two axial CT images through the kidneys, and you'll notice the right kidney is enlarged as compared to the left, and also demonstrating hypoenhancement. There are these linear areas of hypoenhancement within the kidney, and this is the so-called striated nephrogram in acute pyelonephritis of the right kidney. Ultrasound findings of pyelonephritis. Generally, ultrasound has a lower sensitivity for pyelonephritis as compared to CT. It may be performed to evaluate for hydronephrosis or to look for some other cause of flank pain. Ultrasound diagnosis is possible, however, with color Doppler in patients who are thin or in children. The typical CT findings would be areas of parenchymal hypovascularity, so decreased vessels noted on Doppler. This is the corresponding ultrasound finding as compared to hypoenhancement on CT. The renal parenchyma itself may be either hyperechogenic or hypoechogenic in different patients. 
At the upper portion of the slide, you see two ultrasound images through the kidney. The left image with the arrowhead demonstrates slightly increased echogenicity of the upper pole of the kidney, which is by convention at the left side of the image. The right image is a power Doppler image, which is closely related to color Doppler imaging, and this demonstrates hypovascularity of that affected portion of the kidney. So this is a classic ultrasound appearance of pyelonephritis. Next, we'll discuss several atypical forms of pyelonephritis, which can have classic imaging features. The first is emphysematous pyelonephritis, or a gas-forming infection of the renal parenchyma. This is a severe infection with high rates of sepsis and mortality. Mortality is up to 8% even with aggressive treatment. There is destruction of the renal parenchyma and irregular gas collections which extend into the renal parenchyma and cortex. Many of these patients have poorly controlled diabetes and it's a major risk factor for this infection. The infection is typically caused by E. coli, Klebsiella, or Proteus, and may be multiple, multiple bacteria. Treatment is with IV antibiotics and abscess drainage. However, this is an infection that not infrequently requires nephrectomy. At the bottom of the slide, you see two different patients with emphysematous pyelonephritis. On the left image, you can see that the patient's right kidney is basically replaced with numerous gas collections and destruction of the renal parenchyma. On the right image, the patient's right kidney has extension of gas collections from the renal collecting system into the parenchyma and into the lateral perinephric fat. To contrast with emphysematous pyelonephritis, this slide refers to emphysematous pyelitis. So this is a gas forming infection of just the renal pelvis. This is much less severe than emphysematous pyelonephritis and has a lower mortality. It's diagnosed basically by seeing gas within the renal collecting system that does not extend to the renal parenchyma. Again, typically these patients are diabetic and the causative agents are often E. coli, Klebsiella, or Proteus. The treatment is with IV and oral antibiotics. At the bottom of the slide, you see two axial CT images from a patient with emphysematous pyelitis. The left-sided image demonstrates multiple small foci of gas within the collecting systems, and the right-sided image demonstrates gas also noted within the ureters. Another cause of atypical pyelonephritis or urinary tract infection is genitourinary tuberculosis. This is uncommon in the United States, but remains fairly common worldwide. The most classic imaging feature is strictures of the collecting system or ureter. In the delayed phase, tuberculosis results in parenchymal calcification and scarring. At the right side of the slide, we see two abdominal x-rays, which demonstrate excretion of contrast material within the collecting system and ureters. At the upper image, the black arrow refers to stenosis of the infundibulum, which is the connection of the calyx to the renal pelvis with a dilated right renal collecting system and dilated left renal collecting system. This implies stricture of the infundibulum and ureters, which would be a typical imaging feature of genitourinary tuberculosis. The lower image again demonstrates dilated left collecting system, but there is calcification of the right kidney and right ureter. So this would be more of a chronic phase of genitourinary tuberculosis. Another type of atypical pyelonephritis is xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis, sometimes called XGP for short. This is more of a chronic infection, a granulomatous infection of the renal parenchyma, which eventually results in no renal function of the affected kidney. This is characterized by a staghorn renal calculus within the fibrosed renal pelvis. The infection is with urease producing bacteria, most commonly Proteus, but also Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, or E. coli have been implicated. Another characteristic imaging feature are dilated calyces, which are filled with inflammatory cells. At the right aspect of the slide, we see an example of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis. There is a staghorn calculus which is filling the renal pelvis 
and we see multiple cystic spaces within the renal parenchyma. These correspond to the dilated calyces which are filled with inflammatory cells. This concludes the lecture on pyelonephritis. Thank you.